This time, we're going to be talking about Safair's low to mid B paragliders, the Leaf 3 and the Leaf 3 Lite. Well, hello, welcome to On the Sofa with Carlo and Nancy. This time, we're going to be talking about the Leaf 3 and the Leaf 3 Lite, which we've actually flown quite a lot now, haven't we, Nancy? We have, yeah. Different days, different conditions, different harnesses. Let's start on the ground. So I found the glider really easy to mm. um, to inflate and build a nice even wall. I found that the glider comes up really easily and progressively and it doesn't have that tendency to bite. Yeah, it's got, I found it's got a really sort of calm inflation. It's, as you say, very easy to build the wall. And it's always when we say that, it's kind of like, well, they're all easy to build the wall. <laughs> but when you look at the glider, a lot of work has gone into the design of the glider. If you look at the leading edge and the shape of it, a lot of work's gone into that. It's been designed with, with nice big holes and then smaller mm. smaller cells to, to get a balance of like letting the air flow into the glider really easy. Whereas some gliders might have a tendency for the tips to come up and flap about. Yeah. I ended up ground handling the Leaf 3 and the Leaf 3 Lite in some really strong conditions. There were pilots, I mean, I was actually launching and going backwards. Because of the way the Leaf 3 comes up, you can have a lot of confidence to, to pull up. It does want you to give it a good pull up, doesn't it? It doesn't want you to yeah. be too ginger if you, because mm. it comes up really, quite steadily, mm -hmm. um, like some gliders just, you have to really hold them down and they want to, as soon as you let go, it's like pop, pop, they want to come up and fly. <laughs> yeah. So the Leaf 3 is easier to manage th 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 than that. Mm. It's easier to hold down on the ground, which is nice, particularly if you fly somewhere where it's a bit breezy. Mm. And then it does want a good positive input. If you mm. kind of are a bit eh, and too, too sort of ginger and feeble mm. on the, the pull up, then it kind of might do a thing where it comes up and then pauses and then comes back down again. So it does want a bit of insistence, I found. Once you've got the glider up, and it's an exceptionally easy glider to ground handle. It just sits nicely planted above your head. It doesn't have a tendency to sort of drift off or roll around or overfly or drop back. It just sits really nicely above your head. Obviously, if it's gusty, you need to make adjustments, but mm. I felt it was just really easy. And also really fun and playful mm. on the ground. You, because it's easy, um, it's really, you can really put it off to one side or over there and stuff like that yeah. and play around and yeah. mess about and it's it's fun to ground handle. Mm. How did you find it? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that playfulness and agile agility to mm. it, it, it uh, yeah, it shines through. It was through. that day at Fell that we were really playing around yes. and ground handling for yeah. a bit. You seem to be having fun. I was having lots of fun. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely got the, the fun factor. It's not a boring, dampened glider. Mm. You feel like you've got the reassurance, which is what we spoke about with the launch characteristics. It's sort of, you feel like, oh, I've got confidence to launch it and not, it's not going to pluck me and everything. And so then carrying on with the ground handling, you still feel like, yeah, this is playful, it's agile, it's moving around nicely, and I'm, and it's it's communicating, and it's it's not mm -hmm. a not a chatty wing, um, but it's it's communicating, and you feel like, oh yeah, I know what's going on with the air, and that's I think that's what makes it more playful, doesn't it? Yeah, in that way, I'm thinking of some of its um, rival gliders, which it's got quite a few of, so <laughs> lots of lots of gliders in the the low B market, um, and I was thinking that it, it reminded me quite a lot of that playfulness side. The launch is different, but um, to the Epsilon DLS, mm. which I found also really playful. We did, yeah. Also yeah. The, um, the Hook 6. Yes, Nivuk Hook 6. The Hook yeah. 6 and mm. the Hook 6P, which yeah. we've flown as well. Yes. So, yeah. And I found it was like, it reminded me of that. It just had mm. a feeling of really easy, confidence-inspiring, but playful and fun. Yes. Like, so we've ground handled, we've launched, and we're now in the air. And uh, so whoosh. we... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so soaring um, is something we actually do a fair bit in the UK. So today I was flying the Leaf 3 light and I really felt like I had good control. The brakes were light and then, but also I could really feel directly where I needed to put the brakes to mm -hmm. match the, the, the slope and soar up and, and get where I needed to be. Yeah, the, the handling is on the, the lighter side for, for the sort of class and mm. things like that. So yeah, they're not super light, and they're cert but they're certainly not heavy. They're kind of like, I'd say that I felt that they're sort of moderate to on the lighter side, yeah. which is which is always nice. It's not a sports glider, so it's not sort of super, it's not like a sports car. It's got a very calm, reassuring feeling about it. But at the same time, it has got a nice direct feeling yeah. to it. You can turn, 
very precisely, I feel, with the glider yes. and it's got really nice handling. There are so many very good gliders out there at the moment, but I mean, it, it is a very sorted glider. It feels mm. like it's quite, it's quite special, really. I mean, the, um, you know, in comparison to previous models, the Leaf 2, mm. um, I, I think it has taken quite a, um, a design step forward and it does, it feels like a really sorted glider and yeah, and, yeah it, it, well balanced and and perfect for where it sits in the class. To me, it, just flying the glider, it doesn't feel like just an evolution of the Leaf mm. 2. It feels like quite a new glider. Mm. Maybe it's just such an evolution that it feels quite different, mm. but it feels, it feels like the pilot demands are lower and the Leaf 2 is already right for the class but it feels like the pilot demands are just feels easier all around on the ground and in the air mm. but at the same time the performance feels significantly better wow yes flying with others for the class the performance feels really excellent very good and uh, the trim speed does feel good it's really noticeable we've we've flown that when you fly gliders over several days it's very noticeable on different days depending mm. on the conditions just how different the same glider feels absolutely what i felt like it does is it goes from that sort of easy feeling, progressive feeling, and then it, it gets into a nice agile turn. Mm -hmm. So that's where the sort of the pleasure almost sort of builds up. You kind of, yep, yeah, I'm going in, feels good, gets a bit more speed, gets a bit more agility, and, and then you sort of, yep, yeah, okay, we're, we're off and we're going round and you're getting the, the 360 into the thermaling and, and, yeah. and off you go. So it responds nicely to both the brake and the weight shift, yeah. I found. Yes. Confidence inspiring, but mm. playful yes. sort of feeling. So I describe it for the class, I think the agility is pretty good. It's mm. one of the better, the mm. more agile and yeah. responsive gliders mm. in the class. Yes. Um, um, but in terms of it's not a sort of super sports glider, that's like a sports car. It's still mm. got that kind of efficient, it's got a very efficient kind of turn as yes. well. Yes. It's not this kind of, some other gliders as well in the low B class tend to be more roly, mm. and, and that can make them seem a little bit more agile, but then you end up having to use quite a lot of outside brake and mm. outside weight to try and make them turn flat. Yeah, That's fine if you've got a strong core, but when you're trying to work a, a sort of small but weak core, then you need to turn tight, but flat and efficient. Mm. And that's where I think that tests the glider's handling more. Yes. And I think the Leaf 3 does that really nicely. Yeah. Because they climb so well, that's the key thing. You need, mm. you need a key thing. If, if a glider, some gliders might glide fast and be particularly fast on bar or something, but if they don't climb quite so well, then well, you're not gonna get up and you're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. So I feel like the Leaf 3 is just really nice for thermaling and great for progressing into cross country. And it's certainly perfectly capable of doing very decent cross country flights. Yeah. We soared, we yeah. climbed on the thermal, yeah. we got up, we got up to cloud base. We got up to cloud base. And now we're going gliding upwind. We're off. We're gonna glide into wind up yes. to catch the next thermal upwind. Absolutely. How did you how did you find the speed bar? Because well, you looked down here and there was. There was, absolutely. Tied to my foot. <laughs> <laughs> really easy to use, very light. And what I mean by so I say easy, but I mean that's just functionality, but in terms of it's light, so you you want to use it. So that I think that's the key is that I found myself sometimes with speed bars you think, oh, oh it's gonna be a bit more of a strain or it's a bit more of a it's almost a struggle to kind yeah, of Yeah, some speed bars are a bit bar. kind of stiff. Yeah, and you kind of like, stiff oh, and heavy, yeah. perhaps I won't bother. But actually it was a I I put the speed bar on a few times and then I was like, Yeah, no team. This this feels good, this is light, this is easy. So I actually and all the different days I was flying, I was using the speed bar quite a lot. And it actually makes a significant difference as well. So because certainly there's been the lighter days, but we've had the stronger days. And actually putting that speed bar on has given me, I think, a noticeable improvement in my into wind speed. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I agree that the speed bar feels yeah on the lighter side. It's certainly, mm. certainly not heavy, it's lighter and very usable. Mm. You've got a nice communication with the glider from the speed bar. But for me, the most important is that while you're using the speed bar, the glider stays very solid. I noticed that um, due to the design, the glider keeps a very clean shape and it feels really solid, doesn't mm. it? Some gliders yeah. start to get a bit kind of edgy. I think gliders have got better and better over the years mm. at that quite often gliders in the past used to get they'd get all dimples on the front of the leading edge and, and they start feel that to feel flutter, wouldn't yeah you? they start to yeah, yeah the, the leading edge would actually flutter mm. and the, the gliders would all dimple in so that's not efficient but also the glider would just start to feel like it's about to go just mm. feel a bit kind of edgy mm. or otherwise sometimes they feel kind of like some of the elders would kind of stiffen up and go hard and you're kind of 
don't feel what's going on and then suddenly you get a blowout. Yeah. With the Leaf 3 I felt it's got that nice thing where you push on, you feel a nice connection to the glider, you can feel what's going on mm. with it still. It feels really solid mm. but not kind of dead and planky, you still feel what's, what's going, going on. on. Yep. So while we're talking about the speed bar, mm. we talk a little bit about just just how the glider glides, its general gliding and how it cuts through the air. Yes, it, I, it re actually I really noticed how much it cuts through the air, that was, you, you, you do feel that and actually the going into thermals, sometimes you get gliders that are more knocking you back, some gliders surge you in and yeah. what I felt with the leaf actually is that it didn't do either of those extremes, mm -hmm. it kind of cuts through the air and you feel like you just get into the thermal and off you go. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about Noddy. <laughs> Noddy big ears. <laughs> big ears. They went in very easily and you get a good size. There's What's no the pressure like putting them in? Oh, easy, light. Yeah. 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 Light. Just yeah. pop them in, very nice, light, easy, no flapping. And We don't like flapping. Oh, flapping and flapping pulling ears. around and messy and all of that. They were just... Bang, bang, nice and neat, good size. Uh, and when you release them, they were out in seconds. Yes, I agree. Because some gliders, it's like really heavy and you know they're gonna cut into your hands mm -hmm. and, and, and hurt your fingers and stuff like that. So you're right, with the lead three, yeah. you just pull them in, nice and easy to hold, nice and stable, confidence inspiring. The one thing I will mention is mm -hmm. that if you pull the big ears just at the top of the where the split A's are, mm -hmm. and they've got really nice, obvious split A's, so it's very easy to get them. Yeah. If you pull them just at the top there, they're not very big ears. They're sort of, they're not particularly big ears. So you just need to make sure that a good technique for you, sit forward in your seat, get in your hands and then reach up nice and high and pull the big ears in like that. Yeah. You can also pull in the smaller ears. They're still, mm. did do some spirals on both the Leaf 3 and the Leaf 3 Lite. And the spiral behavior is absolutely right for the class. No tendency to kind of just go into a spiral and lock in. So no sort of over tendency to spiral. It's actually got kind of a, a calm, steady entry into the spiral. So you do need to give it a good weight shift. And then, yeah, nothing else to report. It spirals, <laughs> like all paragliders do. But um, the key point for me for this class is I wouldn't want to see a glider that kind of winds into a spiral too fast. And it certainly doesn't do that. And very easy to control the spiral, nice descent rate, easy exit. Another thing to mention, just in brief, is that from a sort of pilot's interested in the playfulness and playing around with the glider, it's absolutely brilliant for mm -hmm. doing um, joy of swooping around on the hill when it's breezy and just playing and messing around, it's just great for that. Very well placed low to mid B glider, it's a perfect um, second glider or also a glider for an ambitious beginner that's got a talented ambitious beginner. I feel like their behaviour is very, very, uh, very calm and well behaved so it's suitable for that. But uh, probably the perfect progression is for somebody who's been flying their A glider and then progresses onto that. Mm. I also think even experienced pilots who just want a glider that's who aren't flying so often, who've maybe been flying for years, got hundreds of hours airtime, but they just want a nice performing, nice to fly glider. That's this is definitely an interesting one. It's definitely more pleasurable to fly than some of the other low Bs. Totally. That, that an experienced pilot will be feeling like oh, it's Yeah. It's got a nice playful feeling we, to we it. We had a lot of fun with it. So Yeah, yeah I mean we, we really enjoy flying yeah. it. Yeah. If you want to know about the right wing for you. Look up our match service. That's a wrap. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs>